right, welcome back. Happy New Year. Another episode of Much Love from the Mushroom. My man Danny. I'm Jeremy. You can call me Jay or whatever. I don't really care. It is January 5th and we, 5th and we are getting started with 2022. So a lot of people with the new year set new resolutions uh, or maybe intentions for the year. So I've been just like thinking about that a little bit. Um, and basically, uh, I'm kind of going to like explain why I think setting an intention or like kind of like manifesting, I guess some people would call it, why it works. And then want to kind of hear what Danny has to think about that and we'll go from there. So what I've heard and I kind of believe it because it, it definitely seems like it's uh, happened with me. And I think there's actually even some science behind it as well. But I like to uh, meditate a lot. And I kind of do different types of meditation. So one of the types of meditation I like to do is kind of like envisioning myself in the future. So um, what I would do maybe, and that could be for a number of things. It could be envisioning myself with uh, a wife and kids, or it could be envisioning myself with a six pack and big muscles, or envisioning myself like talking in front of um, 40,000 people at a conference, um, speaking about mushrooms, whatever. But I think visualizing that is important for a couple of reasons it's one making sure you know what you really want because a lot of people think they want something but i don't know if they really know what they actually want or specifically what they want so it helps to just like envision to really know what you want but then another thing that um i've heard in a book i think it's called like Psy uh psycho i can't pronounce the word like uh i'll get back to you i'll put it in the description but basically <laughs> Your brain is like a homing missile. And when you want some, when you say something in your head, like there's a target, your brain or your uh, whatever will adjust and make sure your body is doing what it needs to do to get to the mission. Now, why, how is that a homing missile? Does it make sense? I don't get it. Well, how does a homing missile work? A homing missile doesn't know where its target is from the start and just be able to hit it. The whole idea of a homing missile, missile is trial and error and just more trial and error, more trial and error, more trial and error until it hits its target. So a homing missile kind of focuses on a target and then uh, when it realizes it's off by five feet, then it refocuses, realizes it's off by four or eight, refocuses, realizes it's off by four or three, refocuses. And it keeps on just readjusting until target is in uh, and locked and then it hits. And your brain, I think, is a very similar thing. Your brain will adjust to hit your goals over and over and over until it hits your goals. Now, the problem is, and why I think like manifest or setting intentions frequently or meditating frequently is important, is because a lot of people forget what their goal is or uh, it kind of like toggles up in there. So when you readjust and when you meditate in the morning and you set that intention, your brain is uh, retargeting and getting closer to um, the goal as instead of just like going and reacting to whatever the world is. So I think it's definitely a good practice to set intentions for the year, set resolutions. But I also think um, it's important, one, to like kind of revisit these intentions uh, frequently. I think I kind of like to do like transcendental meditation, which I think is like 15 minutes a day would ideally be it. And I really think if someone was meditating, envisioning what they want for 15 minutes a day for the entire year, that they're going to probably hit their goal or be a lot closer to it at the end of the year. Uh, and I, I just hate to say it, but like people don't want something that bad. And that's usually why they don't get to the goal. But if you really want it and you're willing to put in 15 minutes a day to just think about it, I think you would hit it. What do you think about all that? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think visualization is huge. I think uh, intention setting is huge. Um, and it's funny, actually, because I, this might contradict what, what we're, I'm saying in a little a little bit. But uh, when I went out, I, I was telling you I had some friends in town for uh, the New Year's. And we went out to this coffee shop on, uh, I think it was the day before New Year's or something like that. And I was going out and I went to journal because... We had been partying all week and doing a, st a bunch of stuff. And I was like, all right, I need to reset and like, you know, really plan for the new year. And let me let me journal some goals and stuff. And I remember I was really like 
struggling to put very specific things. You know what I mean? I was trying to, because a lot of the time it's like, all right, what number, what benchmark, what, you know, a lot of the time I know a lot of those like positivity entrepreneur pages are like, you have to be very specific. And I was really struggling. So I kind of made my, my intentions a little bit more ambiguous of just like feelings and emotions and things of that nature. And, you know, general, general uh, progress rather than extreme specificity. Um, And I know a lot of people say you need to have the specificity for it to work better. Um, But I remember I was struggling and I, I, my friend Alex, he's a great mind. He's a doctor, super smart guy. And I was saying this to him. I was like, yeah, I feel like, um, I was really struggling, but like, I know what the trajectory is. Like, I really know, like, I know where the end goal is and I know what, like, my trajectory has been so far. So I was struggling with specificity and like, maybe like numbers or benchmarks, but like, I know what the vision looks like for me. And like, maybe, maybe I don't need those things because I know what it looks like. And it's sometimes it's hard to put uh, certain concepts into tangible words, especially when it's like really big ideas or really, you know, creative for me as a creative, as a musician, it's like, what is, what does those benchmarks look like in, in a feeling, in a, in a thought pattern, in a, in motivating others? You know what I mean? It, it's hard to put numbers to that sometimes. And I shared that with my friend Alex and I was like, yeah, like, I feel like I didn't do a good job of goal setting because I didn't put really specific, like numerology, like things that you can put in a box and benchmark. And what he said, which I really liked was, He was like when I was in med when he was in med school, he was saying that he used to do that goal setting and he would make it super specific and then he would wind up getting kind of he would sometimes hit it, but like sometimes it was like sometimes you can't plan for for where the trajectory is gonna take you as well as another thing. So by having an open mind and knowing what you want for you and what that will feel like and taste like and look like for you, that's good. But sometimes people I think make it too rigid and put it in a box so much that if it isn't exactly what that thing is, then they get discouraged and they fall off the horse and they give up on it entirely. Um, and I think having a little bit more fluidity, at least for me as a person, is is something that makes it a lot more sustainable for me rather than putting it in a box, making it rigid. And what he said is it's like the, th- the good thing about knowing a trajectory is that sometimes you don't, you couldn't even imagine the heights you could go. And like sometimes we put ourselves so in a box with benchmarks and numbers that it's like, well, you know, when you're, when you're planning a f- for a feeling or for a, a level of contentment, then it's going to, you might like, that's, that's a better way to go about it because you don't even know the heights you could be taking. You sometimes you can't even plan for, for what that would look like and how high you can get. So, um, me, him and Matt, we all were like kind of journaling and planning for the year. And the word we kept all saying was trajectory, trajectory. So, um, it was just interesting because we had that conversation and, you know, that might be kind of a, uh, opposite of what you're saying when it comes to specificity. But for me, that's, that's kind of how it works for me is that, you know, general visualization, where I'll be at, how it'll feel, um, how I'll impact others. And, um, I think that's, that's just for me, something that I've found that works uh, pretty well. Yeah. I, I, um, I don't know if my, um, way is, is definitely like specific. It's more like, um, yeah. it could be specific, but it's kind of like just, um, uh, going back to it frequently okay. and like um and just making sure that it, you know what you want so like if you know what you want is a general thing then it can be general and keep visiting it right. um over and over um or if it's specific you could be specific but i definitely agree with a lot of that i like that um it, if you don't mind would you share uh, what any of your goals are yeah so i mean i think for me this year um i've been you know throughout 2021 it was uh, a year where I found, I found breath work. I found cold exposure, the Wim Hof method, meditation, um, physical exercise. I mean, I was you know working out before, but now I'm actually uh, there's throughout the summer I was leading outdoor workout classes in Philly. Um, now I stream live on Twitch, and I've been building up a community really fast. And you know I have kids in there who are 15, 16 who come in. They're like, hey, I'm depressed. I'm not motivated. What do you do for motivation? And uh, for me. Uh, I think it's a really, really beautiful time um, for for empowering other individuals, you know, especially with new COVID strains popping up every day and threats of more lockdowns and things of that nature. Um, I think individual empowerment is something that definitely is a space I want to be in. Um, I try to, you know, yeah, I found it for myself last year when I was at a really low point when I was stuck in the quarantine. And then all of the things that I did to empower myself were the things that kept me sane, the things that kept my mental right. Um, so for me, some of the general trajectory is, um, 
they're, you know, kind of mind, body, soul. So I want to, you know, help people empower themselves physically when it comes to working out, give them the resources. I want to start doing, you know, outdoor workout classes, guided workouts, whether that's online, whether that's in person, whether it's both, maybe I'm filming the outdoor workout class and, and streaming it live at the same time. Um, so there's the physical aspect, there's the, the mental spiritual. So, I mean, as a music producer, as a creative, I really want to, uh, open people's minds to think about things that they might not be thinking about otherwise. Um, I think a lot of people have been stuck in a paradigm where they, um, go through school, they get funneled through a system. They need to figure out what they want to do by 18. You go to college. If you don't have it figured out, you're a failure. And, you know, a lot of people don't have it figured out. They spend $20,000 putting themselves in debt. And then they realize that's not the thing that they wanted. And, um, I kind of just want to lead by example and show my peers, like, especially I have a lot of friends from high school that are like seeing, you know, I moved to a new state. I'm doing pretty well for myself. A lot of people ask me like, yo, is the grass greener on the other side? You didn't go to college and you're still doing well for yourself and you have no debt. What is that like? And I want to, you know, explain to people, Hey, you don't have to follow the exact paradigm that's set up and set yourself up for debt and sadness. And, you know, uh, this, this trajectory that has been created by a system um, so yeah, uh, in my music, that's definitely something I want to help people, you know, inspire people, show people, Hey, like you can be creative. You can, you can do all these things and, um, put those messages in my music. And then additionally, uh, from the spiritual aspect, you know, want to, yeah, I know we've been championing, uh, championing, <laughs> we've been promoting, um, you know, microdosing and things of that nature as well. So that's kind of fits in the spiritual side. I want to help, you know, give people the knowledge possible to, to help them on that journey if that's something that they choose to do. Because for me personally, that was immensely transformative in my, uh, in, a, in a, the journey that led me down the path of finding a lot of the other things that I needed. So, um, yeah, I would say for me, it's about living uh, as the optimal version of myself. And it's, it's, it's about inspiration. It's about turning other people's light switch on. It's about showing people that we don't have to follow a system that's been laid out for us. Um, and I think people are realizing now more than ever, especially with the pandemic, is that uh, a lot of these things in this system that we thought had to be a certain way are constructs, you know, whether it's, oh, you have to be in the office at this time. And it's like, oh, well, actually, I never had to be in the office the whole time. I could have been working mm -hmm. remote the whole time. And that's what I love about living in Austin right now is that I see so many young entrepreneurial creatives that are realizing, hey, like, I can work from home, I can travel, I can, you know, do things on my own terms. And um, yeah, I just want to be a light for people and inspire in that way. And and those are all broad things. Um, and then when it comes to more of the specifics, I think really just getting my music out there, getting my numbers up and stuff, because, you know, if you're not, if it's not being heard, then the message doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean a whole lot. You know what I mean? I mean, the sentiment, uh, the sentiment remains, but you know, you got to get the ears on it if you want to inspire them. So I think this is also a year where I really want to go, um, deeply into marketing myself in a way that feels organic not the typical like uh stream my shit and blah, 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 like just like you know clickbaity type of stuff i really want to uh you know offer value to people inspire them to the point where they feel compelled to listen on their own right and uh and and things like that so yeah i think this is the year where um, and also live performances that's something just a, a more specific goal man i miss performing live on stage and and just jumping around and, and seeing a crowd's face light up so um, I think those those are a couple of things. I mean, I could go on for days, but that's that's what it looks like for me this year. I like it. You got a big year ahead. I'm excited to see it happen. We um will definitely be having a show in a year, and uh, we'll see how how many of the goals you hit. Um, Absolutely, <laughs> definitely excited for the year ahead. Good stuff. I think that's. Oh no, I had one thing. Um, Psycho Cybernetics. That's the book that I was okay. uh, mentioning that talked about like kind of um it's kind of like the science behind manifesting which i like a lot of like spiritual stuff um but i like when there's science that kind of like backs it up a little bit yeah uh, for example like grounding i've been grounding lately there's a lot of science behind grounding i had no idea but um you're inflamed and when you ground it helps uh reduce your inflammation which like just makes a lot of sense um right which i like because most people will see a hippie say oh i'm grounding and they like, what that what are you talking about? Like, no, nah, there's, there's science behind it. It's pretty dope. Absolutely. Um, that's about all. Love uh, hearing from you. Love hearing all of the goals. I'm excited to uh, help you as much as I can on reaching all of those goals. And um, hopefully Mush Love from the Mush Room is, uh, has a bigger audience in a year. And um, that's really it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right.
Um, have a good rest of the day, everyone. Love you guys. Hopefully we hear from you soon. Much love from the Mushroom. Much love.